he, I mean, it's it sounds exactly like no, if he called me on the phone, I would think it was Jordan Peterson. <laughs> has Jordan Peterson ever called you on the phone? Yes, he has, as a matter of fact. Really? Yeah. I don't think I'm a, yeah. I don't think I'm even a blip of a blip on his radar. I mean, I'm probably not now. This was 2017. He wasn't that big. Still not that big. Kind of a scrawny yeah. man. <laughs> no, I had him on my podcast. I had him on my podcast the same week that Rogan had him the first time. Yeah. And he was a totally different dude, man. He was like in a cardigan, sitting in his office. Yeah. Super like, super like, like, like humble and kind of small and like the professor, you know what I mean? Yeah. Totally different dude. Yeah. Totally different dude. Yeah. I like that dude. Yeah. That, that guy that I, I liked. All right, so, hello. Welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host, Andrew, and tonight I'm going to ask Cyprian and Father, what is, a, like, I don't want to limit it to the just conspiracy theory, but, like, um, an alternative thought, whether that just is outside the just conspiracy theory realm, do you just totally not buy? Like, it could be a conspiracy theory or, like, one of those, like, I don't know. You know what I'm talking about, like, from that whole sphere of thought. Oh, flat earth. Yeah, I was that's dang it, that was gonna be mine. <laughs> like <laughs> that was I probably mean, gonna be mine. Come on, dude. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I think this is gonna be a short icebreaker. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, that, to you, Father. That, that was mine too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Unanimous. <laughs> so But I but I have here's the thing. It is a marker of something. Because I feel like, and I did several years ago. Of what, the dim age? Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. It, it, no, it actually was the topic on which I coined. And see, here's the thing. I didn't even coin the dim age. I was, Joe Rogan mentioned something about Flat Earth, about it being BS. I quoted him on a tweet and said, you know what? This is really how we know we're reentering the Dark Ages. And I'm forgetting the guy's name, but I always say that. And, he re replied and was like, I prefer the dim age. And I said, oh, man, I'm stealing that. Yeah, I'm stealing that. But it was flat earth. Yeah. It yeah. was flat earth that it's like, this is the dim age. Because I feel like I, I in some ways, I feel like the, the the flat earth thing was a gigantic. It was a gigantic test. Mm -hmm. Like how how gullible is the overall human population of people who are relatively educated at this moment. Yeah. Like, I feel like if you, if you couldn't, if flat earth would have been outright rejected, I don't think we could have had 2020. No, I mean, that's really like one of those big ones, a big seed that was dropped like right in like the fertile societal soil or whatever that started to begin to fragment like, I don't know. I don't know if necessarily this is accurate, but it feels like that was one of those big ones that kind of started to fragment because more than, I mean, like most of the stuff, there's so many like connotations to being a flat earther because it's like, it is the mother of all conspiracy theories. If you, but, like, but, it's the yeah. biggest one. Yeah. But it's like, I think looking back on certain things, I was just, had this conversation like two days ago with with the novice and I was we were commenting on you know kind of what it does to you um because there's a whole kind of fever that comes along with it mm -hmm. and I was commenting on how you know she was passing we we're talking about a certain author on certain things and and it brought me back to the author that kind of keyed me into things because you know I, I I grew up you know, not as a kid, but grew up in my kind of adolescent years, you know, listening to Art Bell. Mm. And then 
George Nori, you know, eventually. And uh, shout out to Deacon Mike Tubbs, who he was the kind of like gas on the fire of that, that really got me into kind of thinking about, um, you know, quote unquote conspiracy theories, but, you know, kind of looking through things. But saying all that to say this, my first chiropractor, shout out to him. Um, I don't know what it was, but it, and he gave me a book, 2000, maybe 2001. And it's called Hope for the Wicked by Ted Flynn. And the reason why I quote, you know, this book is very formative for me. Number one, I was already familiar with a lot of conspiracy theories because of the previous sources that I had said earlier. But the thing about this was it was one of the first books I had read um, that had, you know, sources. And that was a huge thing for me because so much of the conspiracy stuff was just like, you know, it's like pamphlets and like, you know, like some guy talking about, you know, um, you know, the uh, BKD and all this, you know, F, what is it? FKBD, uh, FVKD, excuse me, FVKD, the fearless vampire killers and all that stuff. But um, this one had sources. And the other thing was he was a Catholic. I think he's an old right Catholic, but he's a Catholic and God used him to really start eroding the foundation of evangelicalism and Protestantism. And he's the one who actually gave me, um, you know, uh, the the clear sights and the focus for the bricklayers. Like he's yeah. the one who really, um, and that's a whole nother thing because I have a whole nother side thing with the bricklayers in my life on a personal level. But he's the one who really kind of like laid out a bunch of stuff for me. But the reason why I think all this is pertinent is because there is a definitive, legit academic aspect to his work in the sense of, you know, the kind of, like in the, the sources and like, it's like, Hey, don't just take my word for it. Go, go look this stuff up for yourself. I mean, got to take mine is 2000, 2001. I think it was published in 2000. So I had got the, I had gotten the book, you know, not too long after that. So anyways, I say all that to say this, it, it's, I mean, obviously now, um, cause everyone has to be that guy who's like, I was wearing Tom's before Tom's or Tom's, but <laughs> you know, like I was, but anyways, uh, the whole the the whole way that quote unquote conspiracy and conspiracy theories have have entered not just like the the common lexicon but it's it's so weaponized to a degree that i don't i don't even think people kind of realize that it, it's something that can just right you can be you can be written off literally before the words even leave your mouth and in in real ways like dividing families like this yeah. one i'm talking about dividing families, people losing jobs. And when you start thinking about the fact that, you know, like that movie with, um, what was it? Was it Mel Gibson? Uh, yeah. Conspiracy theory. Yeah. Just, and I think every single one of the things that he was mentioning in there, in that movie has turned out to be absolutely 100% true. Every so, single thing. And so the thing is, is like, a conspiracy theory, quote unquote, that I'm 100% on board with is predictive programming. Oh, sure. Oh, for sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it's just funny to me because this, and I think this is the thing, which I'm just going to throw this out for people. Forgive me for being so self aware. I was thinking, it's like, oh, it'd be good tonight to talk about hopeful things, but I don't think that's the way things are <laughs> <Yeah>. going. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that's the way things are going tonight. But just for those who are like, they always talk about the same thing. It's demons and like whatever. But like, hey, it is what it is. But I just, <laughs> I just want to say this. Um, yeah, you know, this is another reason why I think, kind of just zooming out a little bit. If some people kind of didn't get this, this is why I'm like, you know, a big one that I, I think people kind of know about, but I don't know if people take it really serious is like controlled opposition. Mm. And that, oh yeah, you know, because because yeah. we just throw this out and I'll shut up. Because one one thing people don't understand is the spiritual, the demons do that too. And and I think what's funny is if people, it's like I don't want to encourage demonology in the sense that like most people practice it because that's just you know you just kind of open yourself up for influence and obsession actually, but. 
it is viable to understand that there is like a kind of psychological disposition that they have and that there they, there is there is strategy that's just it's tested and you can experience it and i think it's not far-fetched and i think most people would probably agree maybe this is just like dummy 101 stuff but that it's like a transparency that overlaps on the natural world. And this is, this is one of our big themes with us, right. With our project is how do the principalities and powers, how they actually work. And I think the thing is with this controlled opposition, you see it in, in the lives of people who are afflicted demonic with diabolical influence, because um, people have these weird ideas about like, on the one hand, people think demons are buddies and that they like, they, they work together like a football team but on the other end of that spectrum, people act like there isn't any like there isn't any hierarchy and there is. And that, you know, the the put the sacrificing of the one for the other is a very real thing. And that big boss, you know, who's always looking to make the major plays, you see that in spiritual warfare. And I you obviously see that playing out in geopolitics and things like that. And you know, I think that the big thing, which is this is the the great fruit maybe of this age of, you know, kind of like post-conspiracy theorists is realizing there's like, you got to look for the big boss. And if you're not looking for the big boss, you're, you're really spinning your wheels, you know. And the big boss is despair, right? Like at the end of the day, the yeah. goal, the goal is to yeah. take you to complete despair to the point where you'll yep. walk, walk off a cliff, right? Yep. That's the whole idea. Yep. Yep. And this gets it back to maybe, I don't know, maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe we'll get hopeful, but like, I don't want to say too much, but you know, I just want to give a shout out because I think that's where um, people can mischaracterize things. But, you know, we talk a lot about building maybe not all the time, but maybe in different mm -hmm. interviews, you know, I know super and you're active in doing things. And um, obviously we are in our community. It's like, no, 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 you, you have to be busy. You have to be active in building. You got to build an arc, right? You got to, you got to, you got to be involved where you can be involved. And I think that's the big emphasis I want to point out. You know, just to set the record straight, you have to get involved because if you don't, you you slowly are being boiled in that pot of of nihilism and despair. The big the big thing though, this is the real path is don't overstep it. And so people overstep. And, and they, they overstep thinking that their opinion and that the deception of, of the larger kind of machinations that you have influence there on a natural level. Notice I said on a natural level, and you don't. I'll, you know, I'm going to stand by that. Where you do have influence on the, on the larger machinations is in the liturgy and in prayer. Mm -hmm. um, but that's only if you're purified and if you're willing to bear the cross. Um, but you can actually, and you need to do things on that level where you are, you know, accountable and responsible. That's a, th this seems to be, it's so interesting because I, and, and, and maybe this is a, something good to dig into is, you know, it's one of the reasons why, you know, I just, my, my, the trend of me interacting with people on social media, like has gotten, has gone down, down, even down to now where I'm cutting myself away from even like my private groups, right? Because they've grown to a certain size where I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm now it feels it's the same. Like once it gets to a certain size and I'm really getting it's really more about and and I've been blessed with the tools of this of like more in person human um, interactions, but this does seem to be to be the thing that has that gives me the immediate like it's this it's not it's not even like cringe where I'm cringing, but it's like this immediate like repulsion away from it. And it is um, the impulse. And it's it's so weird because it's coming from, quote unquote, orthodox people in many cases on social media like ortho bros. But it's like the impulse to to turn to asking like, well, what is the, the worldly program that we need to put into place? We talk about this, but it's like how to respond to it. Like, what is the worldly program that we need to put into place 
to have a more orthodox society. And it seems like it never, ever includes it's it's one of these things where you're like, yeah, well, prayer, you got to get your prayer. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm already doing that. I'm already doing that. Just I'm, I'm talking about the actual things that we need to do, like the politically or no. this. Or, and it's just that I immediately go. I'm done. Yeah. So can I because there's something I actually do really want to talk about. And I just remembered is I want to talk about that tweet that or whatever it is now that post on X that Trump did about St. Michael the Archangel, right? Remember when he Ooh. said that prayer? Yeah. That's what I kind of want to talk about. I just remembered. I was like, well, I I think this is I think this is related. No, I it 100% is. It 100%. 100%. Yeah. Can we can we remember though that Donald Trump like and as far as I know he has never recanted this? Do we recall, perhaps I can pull it up, there have been en- multiple times, at least two times, but one quite famous where Donald Trump was interviewed and asked, and I'm sure most people watching this have seen, yeah. where he's asked, what have you ever done that you asked God for forgiveness for? Yeah. And yeah. he said, I've never done anything <laughs> where I ha- I've never asked God for forgiveness. Yeah. Because I've, I've never done anything where I needed to ask God for forgiveness. And I was like, man, I've done things today. Now, <laughs> like, now I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't what do know. you mean? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Go ahead and <laughs> what are you talking about? I may have done something at the time that I was watching. Maybe watching this video might be yeah. the thing that I have to ask God forgiveness for. <laughs> like, what in the world? <laughs> <sighs> This man said he said never so i'm <laughs> like look until you recant until you recant that i oh, don't care what kind what you're i don't know oh hold on my mic my mic messed up hold on no you're good while well, you did that let me just say but you're my man oh no now you're no your mic is gone well oh no it no is. there it is no it's yeah, good. okay no it's good so um David Gornoski was like, maybe he's acting. I was like, yeah, he ain't. <laughs> he, he's not acting, bro. Well, no, maybe he's playing, you know. I'm like, he's not that mad at me. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, so this is Go my, ahead, like, I don't know if he has recanted that or not. The thing is, is like, I, I would think not, but I haven't gone through all of his interviews. And maybe at some point he does come back and say, like, you know, because the argument, I can't, I found all these pictures of him and p diddy together right okay well there's a couple people i still know who still really love donald trump i love them i'm not going to name them they're fine but what i show them these pictures and they're like oh well yeah but that was a long time ago so any of that stuff from his past life they're like i've tried using the argument of like yeah but that's what he was doing and you're like yeah well i can think of a couple like saints that used to live pretty bad lives but they've repented i'm like so if there is, and if someone clickety clacks and says, like, actually, in this interview and in this whatever, he says, like, I misspoke. I actually do ask God for forgiveness. I don't know if that exists or not. And if somebody says that, then I'd be like, okay, cool. But as far as I know, he's never gone back on that. He's always like, no. And then he's little like, you're a Christian. I'm Christian. And then he, like, like just throws it in, like, really, really quietly. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, but I, yeah, I, mean, I just want to put that out there. I'm trying to be fair. I mean, I, I think there's two separate things, kind of, right? They're, they, it's that tweet almost requires a separate. It's almost like it feels like we would need to talk about it separate from even like some of the Donald Trump persona stuff we're talking about, if that makes sense. Because I think the platform what was actually tweeted right because that's a particular prayer like that like wait what, I, i'm sorry father forgive me andrew was it on x or was it, was it on, on his thing true social it was on x i think, I think it, was it was on x, x. i don't know sure. I think it was on x See, that's i think it's on x but you know and i just so i don't I'm try i'm not trying to duck this whatever we can come back to it but 
I was thinking about this too. It's kind of like, interestingly enough, it's like, you know, the, the Russell brand thing and mm. um, baptisms and all that stuff. It's like, look, you know, I mean, honestly, the way I, the way I look at it is, you know, people have chopped it up. It's been covered. It's kind of gold news, I guess, but you know, he came out, he's like, look, that, that's my underwear. It was a spontaneous thing and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you know, I really, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I really do sincerely hope the best for him and for, you know, your man, JP. Um, I do, you know, they had their whole, like, they're trying to do like the harvest crusade thing, like Greg Laurie now. <laughs> like, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what that was. You know what I'm saying? Very strange. Very strange. I, don't, I mean, it's just, I don't know what that was. Right. I don't know what that was. Um, for people who don't know what I'm talking about, Greg Laurie, um, that was an actual legitimate slip. That wasn't me being snarky. No, I, I'm not sure I'm clear what you're talking about. Oh, you know who Greg Laurie is? The pretended. Oh, man. Okay. Pretend. So there's this guy, Greg Laurie. And you don't say. Yeah. Do you know who Greg Laurie is? No, no, Father. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm trying. Because no, I don't know who he is. Please oh. explain. Yeah. So there's this guy, Greg Laurie, who's this big evangelical guy. They made a movie about him not too long ago where uh, Kelsey Grammer plays him. No, he plays Kelsey Grammer plays Chuck Smith. And um, anyways, so the point being is uh, Chuck Smith is the guy who started Calvary Chapel. Calvary Chapel is this big evangelical. They were like, okay. they were the big denomination that came out of the Jesus people movement, the 60s okay. counterculture Jesus freak movement, right? Okay. So Greg Laurie, and, and and I'm from California, so it's like a huge. His church is there, and like they would. This feel, this is all Southern California stuff, right? All like, Southern this, California. This is, this is the reason why other people don't, because I would see the harvest stickers on everything, yep. and no, yep. so many people. But yep. I guess other people don't know it. I yep. guess it's just a California thing. Yeah. So like Harvest Church, Harvest Crusade, it's like this huge mega, like one of the first early mega mega churches. It's a mega mega church, double M M and M. Um, it's so That's chocolatey funny. goodness. So like, it, it's this huge mega church in Riverside, and it came out of Calvary Chapel, which came out of the Jesus People movement, which came out of the whole, you know, Darby Schofield, um, you know, uh, Rapture movement, like their total dispensationalist, all that stuff, right? But he, they would fill like Angel Stadium, like a, like Angel Stadium, the baseball stadium, fill it, and they would have these crusades where they'd fill people in, they'd have bands play, they'd have people make announcements and they'd make what's called altar calls where people would come down and they want to give their life to Christ. And it was always people who had like, you know, kind of done it a million times before. Anyways, that's this context. It's this, you know, you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people, whatever. Sure. And that model is really kind of like a derivative of the Billy Graham thing, right? Like stadiums and blah, blah, blah. Does that make sense? Just, just to give some, some context. Um, so at any rate, uh, JP and Russell Brand, I don't know what they're doing. They're doing some story of stadium tour thing, which that's a whole thing. Interestingly enough too, I'm not really sure what to make of that. This is my first time thinking about it. I'm just putting, I'm, I'm not trying to falsely make connections, but you know, even, even, even Tuck has been doing these stadium tours and it's just. I don't know. I feel let's maybe dive on that in a minute. But at any rate, Russell Brand and JP, uh, they were doing this like, I don't know, Americana faith. I don't know what I don't know what it is. But at the end, you know, there's like prayer. Russell Brand's praying. Um, JP's wearing his two face suit, which is super weird. And um like two face, the Batman villain. Yeah, and yeah. Like, you know, I got like the kneeling, reference. He's yeah. like kneeling to pray and all that stuff. <laughs> on which and everyone's side? just like yeah Wait, a- Peter- peterson was kneeling to pray yeah you should you should pull it up it's interesting because people like well, hold oh, on hold know. okay hold on i'm yeah, gonna, you should pull right. it up. now i gotta get it keep going you should pull it up so like so while you're pulling up i'm gonna keep going so anyway so like so that whole thing happened but like i i would just say this so on the for real right because who am i to tell the king what he's gonna do um and i really sincerely hope russell brand jp um Trump. I hope all these people's conversion is is quote unquote honest and and will bear fruit. I hope. Um, but I just want to say a couple things. The first thing that I'm going to say is that um, for those of us who came out of evangelicalism and for those of us who are over the age of, you know, 25, um, 
we have witnessed countless sports heroes, musicians who quote unquote find Jesus and get chewed up super quick because evangelicalism in particular, and you know, just Christians, just people, people in general can be opportunists. And some of some of I know some of our good brothers and sisters in, in orthodoxy, they fall into the same trap. They haven't completely divested themselves of those evangelical tendencies of wanting to look for that kind of secular bridge. You know, everybody wants to get the guys like, oh, great, he's on our team now, and let's, like, put him yeah. out there and use him, you know what I'm saying? And so the, so I'm just saying for some people, it's not that I'm jaded. It's just that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe hyper vigilant about things. And it's not out of just being some sort of, like, orthodox purist. It's out of actually coming out of evangelicalism and seeing that over and over and over and over again where the litmus is not so much the sincerity of repentance, but rather like the reach quote unquote of the person. Yeah. So my skepticism is really based a lot of it out of that, you know? Um, and that even ties into, and this is a key thing I want to say too, because I want to just make an argument because there's, you know, there's videos and I think with videos there's, there's discussion and people want to make arguments for like, Hey, Young Christians always make mistakes. I made mistakes as a young Christian, yes. I made mistakes as an Orthodox Christian, yes. But I just want to point something out to some people, a couple things. Um, usually the mistakes are made by those who don't have authority and those who don't have accountability and those who don't have experience. So authority, accountability, experience. Okay. One of the reasons why I hammer JP so hard, and I know whatever timestamp man, but he's, you know, we've given him a break for a while. One of the reasons why I hammer him so hard is because he's guilty of all three of those. Mm -hmm. Right. Because mm -hmm. the accountability, check, check. The authority, maybe not so much, but the reality is, is for him, the accountability, the authority is tied into his accountability. Because I've seen plenty of, Orthodox people and people who would have right influence, you know, be on stage with him. And, and so he knows better. Let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. And then experience. I mean, you're not going to find a man more hard pressed about the quote unquote working of the inner man than him. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm always like, mm, he, like someone he knows better. Right. So it's, it's not like we're talking about the 22 year old football store, football star who, mm -hmm. you know, got look you know had a bad night and found jesus we're not talking about that mm -hmm. right so so there's that but the other thing I is found the, i found the video by the way father okay forgive me let me just wrap this up i'm sorry go ahead yes but but i think i want to say that too is that this is there's an interesting connection here too in regards of and it is what it is right i mean people have skeletons in their closets until they empty those those closets but like, you know, both Russell Brand and whoever, I mean, there's these, you know, that picture of him kissing an egg with, with the Diddy, you know what I'm talking about? Very weird. It's weird. And that wasn't that long ago. And mm. and, the, and the thing is, is like, and I'm just going to say, this is my last big point. And I want everyone to pay real close attention to what I'm about to say here, because this is where the rubber meets the road. And this is where I will fight somebody on it. Um, You need a period of time. And, and God leads people. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it in the lives of others where God leads them in a time of, of putting them in the dark. It's like St. Mm -hmm. Paul, you know, being in Saudi Arabia for how many years after his conversion. Mm -hmm. So that, that period of time in which someone is seasoned and, and certain things are put into place, um, that's when I don't see that, I go, ah, you know. And the thing is, is when you have access to people and you have resources, you can't feign ignorance to me. Um, it's, I mean, this is, you know, Connie is in the same boat with all that stuff, you know, and when someone mm -hmm. doesn't have a spiritual father, they don't have, um, you know, the authority and the accountability of the church behind them, all bets are off. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'll just say this last thing. I'm going to shut up. I'm sorry, but... And that day, many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy your name? Do we not cast out demons in your name? And he will say, get away from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Everyone mm. be careful. Someone saying Jesus and even bowing their, name, bowing their knee and saying prayers, you got to be careful because, you know, I don't want to tell everyone what the riddle is, but there's a riddle to that. And there's, there's a litmus to that that a lot of people don't know about. Well, how am I going to know if I'm going to be in that camp of I don't, I never knew you? 
And the thing is, is there's a, there's a definitive answer to that. Okay, roll the film. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. A short prayer on this holy and auspicious day. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, I call upon your name on this occasion. May it augment an era of peace. May we reach out our hands in friendship, in particular to those that we might imagine we would oppose. May these institutions that were once regarded sacred, so sacred in fact that any incursion upon them as yes. on January 6 was regarded as a kind of heresy. May the values that warrant these buildings, these institutions, that flag this nation, being regarded as one nation under God, return to the forefront. May I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, in your holy name, that all Americans of all cultures and colors and persuasions come together in your name. I ask, Heavenly Father, for, uh, for a new era of peace, that Satan be cast out in your name in all his forms, but in particular in the bizarre Kafka-esque, Huxley-esque, late Orwellian form of totalitarianism, bureaucracy in the name of care. Lord, I ask for true republicanism and true democracy, that every individual may feel their freedom, their freedom to open-heartedly engage in discourse and conversation Recap with one this. another in good faith and enter the deception the lies and the censorship and the control respect the honor of the individual the sovereignty of the individual that we are all fallen individuals and that we may serve in your name on the day of the feast of saint michael i ask lord that your holy light shine on america and across the world for a new voluntary unity not imposed top-down unity lord Lord, I ask that we be brought together in these principles under your name. I pray for America, and if I have your permission, ladies and gentlemen, we'll end with the Lord's Prayer. Just do the version that you know. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <clears throat> thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it I is in heaven. I don't know if you can hear us, Father. Give us this day I don't know our if you daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, yeah. as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the Get kingdom, it. the power, and the glory forever and ever. Get Amen. It. Hallelujah. Yeah. Do you know, like, how the people well, hold might... On. Hold on. I want to say what I found interesting and and you know, in, in the proper sense, good in, in what he in what he he prayed, right? And so because of that, you know, it just makes me want to continue to just, you know, I, I want to be careful of falling into there's a you know, want to be discerning but not judgmental. And like he does he does invoke this I this truth about praying for one's enemies. Okay, that's good. That's good. You know, that's something that you really you don't see. Um, and I like the fact he's making a distinction and even talking about the principalities and, the, and, and that's good, you know, like I feel comfortable at this point saying that prayer on its face in the context of he's a new Christian. This is me just not trying to be jaded, right? He's a new Christian. Uh, he's someone who's in the spotlight. Um, he doesn't have correct doctrine. He's not in the church. He's not orthodox, right? So in light of all those things, trying to be charitable, Okay. Um, now that being said, that being said, the proper, and I want to just be proactive and just kind of offer service here. I believe, and this how I would, this is how I would lead my spiritual children, and you know, people are free to do what they want, what they want to do. But the way I would approach this is, I would say, this is a, this is a place where. We need to be um, uh, graciously watchful. <laughs> Does that make sense? Because, again, the big yep. problem is context, meaning this man's context, everything I already mentioned. He's a, he's a celebrity. He doesn't have any He doesn't have any real authority, no real guidance, da, 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 all this stuff. Well, you know, let's hope the best for him, right? And let's, let's see what God's going to do. Because, you know, whether preached out of envy or preached for whatever, Christ is preached. Okay, great. So that being said, 
the big problem with a lot of this is, is that people too quickly just want to be like, you know, team Jesus is, and they just want to, as St. Paul says, lay their hands too quickly on someone. And so that's my, oh, that's my big thing where I want to be cautious and be like, yeah, I think we just need to be very careful about laying our hands too, too quickly on things, on, on, on people. Um, because this is, if you don't know, this is where it's headed. And and I, and forgive me for sounding like the broken record, but again, everyone, I just remind everybody, you know, quote me, <laughs> the antichrist is not going to be a 500 pound crack smoking black lesbian. So that's why it isn't one of those things where you just, it's not about being cynical. It's about realizing how serious things are. And when you look at all the things that are happening, right? You could talk about all the things that are happening economically, things that are happening on a social level, things that are happening with the quote unquote environment, North Carolina, you know, interestingly enough, North Carolina, just like Maui. <laughs> Is it just me? Am I the only person who makes that, who sees that correlation, right? So all these things are happening. Now is not the time to, to, to be just pining for a leader. Now is not the time to be pining for an earthly king, for princes and the sons of men. Now is not the time. Now is the time for you to do your part. Meaning, before you want to like throw in and like raise up your king, right? Uh, not King Jesus, your king, whoever he's going to be. Maybe you should put some money, put some time in. Like, yeah, you know, I've heard some guys, some people going down to Carolina themselves. And trying to see to me in my mind, forgive me, that's the type of stuff where I'm like, see, that's valid. Because what that is, is that's you putting some skin in the game, and that's you, not you overreaching. Because the overreach is, is where they get you. It's like a feint, you know, feint in boxing, right? Part of what you exactly. do, yeah, part yeah. of what a feint does also, right, is to get someone to overreach to get them off their yes. footwork and overbalance so that you can lay them out. So, yes. Can I just say, yeah, the over the the overreach, Father. Just to Andrew, forgive me, but I, I, I had wanted to say it before, but it is, it is such an important, it is such an important point that like I have I have myself seen this, but I have also so many times seen people. It's like they they are so desperate to do the right thing that they so overextend themselves to a level where they can't Sit do the in. thing and then yeah. despair because they couldn't do the thing lays them out. You, you just, you blew my mind just now because yeah. Is that what you were going to say? No, 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 no. You're just absolutely <laughs> correct. You're just, I, yeah. it, it, I just see it. You know, I do it. I've done it. How do I see it? I've done I, it a million times. Yeah, dude. It's, it's just, I think it's part of being a dude and Orthodox. I think sometimes you just tend to like, especially if you come, if you're intellectual, which most of us suffer from that particular malady, especially when it's unguided coming to the church, we tend to rationalize things in this way of like, like father talked about, we were doing this thing for a little bit and it's not to call anyone out because if I were a catechumen during this time, I probably would have done the same thing, but a bunch of catechumens were leaving during the uh, the part you catechumens after the catechumen prayer during the liturgy and father had like never given them a blessing to do that. So like, like, so the fact that like they had done it and not had the like phronema or the mindset of the church to ask for a blessing to do, all of that is a lesson. All of that is a lesson and it kind of lessened the rational intellectual faculty that's kind of warped and distorted to kind of bring it back to be like, Oh, you think you know what the right thing to do here is, but actually you sitting down and running some kind of equation of what's the moral thing to do here is not Christ. So you just can't, it's not, it's so you have to again, reorient the intellect, but. Yeah. I mean, I, I think one of the key things that's really important and, and this is, ooh, this is rough. Um, I, was, I have a, I have a feeling this might uncover some sheets, but. You know, one of the problems is people really, <clears throat> excuse me, people really don't believe that Christ is guiding the church. I I mean that in a, in a literal sense. I mean, people who are, you know, Christians, like, 
they they'll scent and they'll nod their heads and do these things, but you look at how they live their lives de facto. And that's one of the things about obedience. It's like obedience is a weird word because in 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 the church, or at least here or whatever in the States and stuff like that, it's like no one talks about it, but when people do talk about it, a lot of times it's talked about in like in a weird way. And they talk about it like it's, you know, some sort of like magic spell. Well, the monks, they practice obedience, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, if you're a disciple of Christ, if you're a Christian, and I don't mean that in a weird evangelical sense, I mean, it's like, you know, as Orthodox Christian, baptized, chrismated, you're submitted yourself to the life of the church, you're, you have to practice obedience. And what's crazy is a lot of people don't. And that's where, you know, you get these things, people, like, well, well, I wish I could be obedient to somebody at, like, if you have to look for it, you, <laughs> you're, yeah. you're, you're yeah. not practicing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I think this is, the, I think this is really key because um, all the things that we want, we want to be valiant. We want, we want courage, like all the stuff that, you know, like Andrew, you know, rightly said, like, you know, guy and Orthodox, like there's these things that you want, but it's like, in order for you to get all those other things in a way that's not being glorious, you have to first have obedience. You have to learn to be obedient. And interestingly enough, this gets us into a whole thing. I'm sure I want to make sure before you write any comments that you finish this portion here, right? Because this opens up the whole thing about 20 and like what happened to the churches and like, where's real obedience. And we can talk about that. No problem. You know what I mean? But I just want to say that, the reality of cutting off your will, right? That's not some sort of just like monastic thing. It's like Christ, his spirit, you know, his Holy Spirit is in the church. That's the thing about the sacramental life. It's like, look, I'll make it real simple for you. The church calls every single one of us to fast. And the only ones who don't fast are the ones who, who have sought a blessing and an exception. That's just standard. That's just standard, right? That's just one simple, small example of where we're all called to a level of obedience, right? And not compliance, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. That, that's a whole other thing, real obedience. And so, Father, obedience. can we just dig, can we just dig into the distinction? Because that's yes. a really important yeah. distinction. I don't want to just gloss over it. If Absolutely. You would, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. Well, Andrew, do you want to, do you want to, throw out the uh on the clinical side of it first you want me to just jump in i can just jump in but i thought i'd you know no, you're, what? You're, huh what 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 would be compliance of, of compliance oh compliance is if you're doing as you're directed and as if you're directed you're you know to be like med compliant you have to be taking the meds that are prescribed to you at the times that they're prescribed to you and the amount that they're prescribed to you and you have to be honest about it and there has to be a level of trust between the client and the and the provider so um you know and then compliant i mean yeah that's <laughs> that's well, that's the clinical, clinical sense definition. in the clinical sense compliance right you don't get the it doesn't carry the same charge right when we're talking about spiritual because obedience and compliance are the same thing. oh sure and what yeah. people often offer in the spiritual life is is compliance and not obedience and even in the clinical sense, right, people get, get they give a kind of compliance in which they'll take to the letter of the law. They'll do the thing that they're being you know, asked to do. But in regards of having an actual investment in that decision, right, that is what's absent. And so that's the difference, because a person who's obedient, a person who's obedient, they obey with a measure of love. Right. And so when I say love, I don't just mean like gushy wishy. I mean, you know, it's like someone can have a love for the good. Right. Someone can have a love for dignity, a love for honor. Someone could have, you know, a love for for progress, for growth, whatever the thing is. That's what I mean by, you know, certain measure of desire and that obedience. That that's what makes the difference, because actually when someone just complies by the letter of the law, like a dog. Right. That compliance oftentimes leads to bitterness and it learn and it and it leads to some degree even things like pride. It can lead to things that can be very destructive to the soul, right? And so, this is what I find. Unfortunately, it can be very um, 
hard for people to wrap their mind around largely because of our culture, right? Because you, ha you have to take in mind our, our culture does not value obedience. Think about, I could be wrong, but like, even if like we have a lot of people comment on this, well, there are, they're in our audience. So there's the echo chamber. So to them, it's like, whatever. But if you step outside the echo chamber, think about how many people really don't see obedience as a value in regards of, let's say even their parents mm. and how, you know, as Americans, you know, it's like disobedience is, you know, it's a virtue. Yeah. You know, it's, some, it's something that's, you know, if you can, talk if you know better than the system and you can buck the system, I mean, then like you're a hero. You know, just for the sake of bucking though just for the big that thing. that's the thing is just for the sake of bucking because <clears throat> excuse me one of the things is you know bucking the system is only valuable if number one the conditions of the system is wicked not just broken yep cuz th there's there's a difference between a system being broken and a system yeah. being wicked we can work it broken broken right. is we can broken bro Broken is to be fixed. Yeah, yeah. But it's broken demands to be else, fixed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wicked is something else. So it, it has to be. <clears throat> it has to be wicked. And then the other condition that has to be there is your your desires, your intention has to be that of of one of virtue in Christ. Like for instance, we've talked about this before, right? It's something that here here's the litmus. There's guys who have asked me about the use of force. Right. What is what is the, the the use of force? And I'll make it real simple. If someone comes and they try to assault your wife, your sister, your daughter to try to assault your kid, you know, I'm staying there. I will physically stop them. Right. But what you're not going to see me do is get up and be like, yeah, you don't want the smoke and start stomping on right. the right. guy's head. And jaw once he's subdued, you know I'm not right. going to say Andrew hold that fool down and just start, you know, yeah. mutilating his body. Right. Right. That that is not okay, and that's where a lot of people are at, and that's where people, you know, um, have these fantasies of violence and all this stuff. You know what I mean? That's not okay. That see that that's the line, and these lines, right? No one thinks about these lines, and I'm, I'm not I'm not saying that as in like oh whatever. I'm saying that in like no one thinks about these lines and you know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, you're fantasizing about whatever. I just wish they try. I wish they try it. And it's like, yeah, you go to the range and you do this and that, but like, let me give you a couple of things, you know, maybe I said this before, I don't know, but like, you're not rucking. We talked about this before, right? You're not rucking. So that's the first thing. Like, combats more than you being able to pick up a gun and shoot it. <laughs> and if you don't know that, then you really don't know what you're talking about. If you can't ruck, then you don't know what you're talking about. That's the first thing. The second thing is if you're fantasizing about whatever, you know, just hoping they try it, then I guarantee you when that opportunity comes, if you don't become a craving coward yourself, you will become a vessel for a, a portal for hell. And if you think that like, Oh, you know, you saying, you know, what is this phrase? Um, like God's kill them all at God's sort of mouth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That doesn't, that's not going to apply to you. Um, so I'm just saying like, these, these are the things that you got to really think about because as, as times become dangerous and draw an eye, it's like, yeah, you, you have to think, you have to think, yeah, what am I going to do? And, and what am I do? Isn't just about like, what's my tactical position. Right. But what am I going to do is, you know, how am I going to maintain things in such a way that not only I, but my sons, if they see me or, or the people that I'm responsible for my community, how, how we would maintain our humanity in, in difficult times. Like that's, that's the thing. Right. So I think father, father also in, in you saying that, and the fact that our society doesn't value obedience, though clearly if the past five years have been any example, uh, there is certainly a value of, compliance coming from the powers that be right they will value your compliance but not your obedience but i think that one of the things is that outside of the church there are not any institutions that are that are actually teaching like not only how to be obedient 
but how to be how to be one who it would be appropriate that others would obey yeah if that makes sense right because it's one thing to learn how to be obedient but it's another thing to learn how to be someone who is worthy of being obeyed Mm -hmm. and there there is no institution besides the church Mm -hmm. that is even close to even trying to do that and Mm -hmm. so of course how could you value obedience when there's outside of that right and so and so this is so true and but that leads us to the big problem and so i just want to say this Although what you're saying is 100% true, it, regardless of that, though, I'll tell you why it's so important. Because obedience is inarguably the greatest virtue. Because obedience, not to give a trade secret away, but obedience is the combination of humility and wisdom. And it's expressed and understood and fundamentally apprehended in love. And that's why obedience is, you know, I can go on and on and on about it. But this is one of the reasons why it is so maligned in the world. This is for what I just said. Because the man who has begun the process of apprehending obedience is the man who will become a friend of God. The man who's begun to apprehend obedience is one who will become welcomed and known by God. Right? And the reason why... There is no institution outside the church like you're speaking of is because the devil is the God of this world and his sacrament and his virtue is rebellion. Yeah. Yeah. For the sake of rebellion. And so unless you are actively pursuing that virtue in Christ, well, you, you must be, you know, I give you the dire warning, be careful because there is no neutrality. If you aren't actively pursuing this in Christ, then you might be very well nursing at the teat of the devil because rebellion is in everything. It's in, it's, it's worse than fluoride Hmm. and you don't know it until you know it. And oftentimes it's too late. Hmm. Well, yeah, because there was that like um, story of St. Paisios, right? Where he had the little boy, uh, like the 10 year old little boy, and he, he didn't have anyone to listen to. So he just like watches that little boy. He's like, Well, what are you going to do today? I was like, Well, I think we're going to go watch the sheep. Another Paisios, like, or St. Paisios, like, Okay, let's go. It's Maybe cool. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know. I see, uh, I have the great, wonderful privilege of having like an Orthodox doctor. And that doctor, like, talks about, like, the proper relation between things. Because, like, I have, like, gut stuff, like, GI stuff. And so she's talking to me about, like, the wonders of, like, probiotics. And, like, like you know, the correct, like, dieting and stuff like that. And, like, the right relationship to one another. And, like, the inner church. Like, even within, like, our own body. Like, physically. Just, like, the way that things have to co Like, you know, not, like, the weird bumper stickers. But, like, coexist in the sense of, like, we all have to, like hang out together in a proper order. And I think one of them, one of the criticisms that can be levied against the West, and I think in proper form, is that um, the obedience for the sake of, well, I don't know. I mean, I've been throwing this phrase around a lot, but like obedience for the sake of like tradition, small T, is like um when you lose that heading, when you lose that thing to be ob- obedient to something outside of like a human institution, you lose like mm-hmm. the grace that exists there. And that's how you end up, end up with like, I'm a one trick pony, but that's how you end up with things like world war one, where it's like, okay, well, we don't know where it's like, we built this ship, but we don't know where it's going. We don't know what's going to happen when it gets there. We just know what we need to do in order to maintain the ship. You know, like, we just know that this needs to be changed at this time. This needs to be fueled. You know, this needs to be repaired and hatched when it looks like this. And, like, but at the same time, because Christ is no longer where it's heading, it lacks, like, that grace. So I think that, like, you know, tradition for tradition's sake in the Western sense, that's 
you know, I think that that's like a powerful tool and it's a powerful thing that can be used against the quote unquote, like Christian church is because this like this whole complete lack of grace. We don't even know why we're doing the things that we do. And then when the devil so rightly calls out like, well, why are you doing this tradition? They're like, well, we don't know. We're just going to, our wedding is just going to be like, it's going to be like a cocktail party. You know, we don't, we don't really want to minister there or anything like we're just going to hang out and then that will be the wedding. It's like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Well, is, is there is there any tradition outside of the church? I, the reason why I ask that is because it seems that when the church, when a society encounters the church, the true church, then those things that the society has had as tradition that can be baptized then become part of the church. Yeah, and all the rest. So it's almost to say that all tra- all tradition that's worth anything mm-hmm. is part of the church. Like, because the reason why it's able to be baptized is because it was in some, do I have this right, Father? Like, it's able to be baptized because it was already compatible with the church. Right. Because, you know, it's it's the blessing, you know, God can't, God can't and doesn't bless something that can't be blessed. It's this weird. Right, right. Catch 22. But yeah, if if it's, if it can be blessed, it can be baptized, you know. Um, But the the thing is, is if it can't, then it, then it's not and it falls away. In the in the context of, you know the the nation, the individual, whatever coming coming to Christ, and that kind of circling back back around to, um, you know, wanting to just be charitable. At the, I'm fine just trying to be charitable, like a, like a Russell Brand would say. It's like, you know, that's one of the things is just like I, you know, I kind of want to just be somewhat judicious circumspect and you know i want to couple that with my desire to be charitable because um things take time right but something is interesting when you're in the public eye you you would know this Supreme. It, things get accelerated um do they ever? for for better or for worse for better or for worse you know and um you know it, it's one of those things where someone's going to argue about this to some degree and I think, you know, I'm not going to really argue one way or the other, but I'm just going to say, hype, you know, I know hypothetics are the devil's game. That's that's what I've been saying to people. But just forgive me for this exception. Hypothetically speaking, right, if Kanye was, if that thing was a real thing, let's just say, right, his whatever, just for the sake of the argument, if his conversion at that time was a real thing and then he just, you know, got burned out, blah, 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 okay. What I find interesting is all that got accelerated light speed because of him being in the public eye. If he wasn't in the public eye like he was, things would have been, if it was genuine, right? Things would have been very different in regards of the 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 kind of purification, the process in which, you know, he would have been able to have things in his life be shown to be of value, first and foremost, and he could have been able to to glob onto those things in a certain way, but because of being in the public eye and that kind of like pressure performance and the, the vanity of wanting to be cutting edge and be a step of the head, uh, one step ahead, it, it, it really did not facilitate if again, if just for the argument's sake, if there was a real desire to follow God at, at one point in his life, it was almost doomed from the start looking back on things because the public eye is just well, did you hear during his prayer he said in the sovereignty of the individual? Mm-hmm. There was actually a lot of things in that prayer, uh, including starting with asking for starting with asking for peace in a very like sort of peace for peace it's peace's sake sort of way that there was some very antichrist. I mean, I know you're trying to be charitable, Father, so maybe I could be the one to yeah. not be. But hey, Father, we if, got you. We'll rip into. But it. if I had to, <laughs> if if I if if I think a transcript of that, it's a very antichrist prayer. I'm sorry, it and is. Jordan Peterson, the disingenuousness of Jordan Peterson taking one knee like this, you like know, he's and pre- like he's like, thinking that's the prayer code. just. I mean. Jordan Peterson doesn't believe any of that. Jordan Peterson doesn't believe Jesus Christ is real. He started crying he doesn't believe too. any of those things. That? He, he, no, he did. He did. Didn't. He, did, he did Jordan Peterson like flip in the back of the next switch and tears start coming. Oh. Yeah, because especially oh. the you know, I don't, I don't have my reading glasses on, so I couldn't, I couldn't see that level when of detail. Russell but Brand's it's like, wow, true democracy. 
And Father, may I ask this? This is something that I think is interesting that I think has maybe come up, but it's not it's not proper that um I guess I don't want to sound like a like a I'm trying to nitpick, but it's not proper for Protestants to just immediately call on the Father, right? Like that's kind of weird. That's always struck me as weird. I mean, Protestants they'll do whatever they want. Yeah. <laughs> that's part of them being Protestants. Yeah, but that's. <laughs> And forgive me, I won't double down on this if it's not a thing to talk about. But it's like, but that is especially like kind of like that's not good. Like it's I mean, not they don't, some... they don't again that this is it's not real. It's clearly not real. They 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 be, because the threat, they don't see that they they have no fear of God, so that's how you know it's not real. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Oh, it, I'm not. I'm really not just trying to say. Father, here. it's me. Father, it's me. It's not you. Like just everybody, it's me. You can direct it's it towards me. Cyprian and direct me. Direct it. To direct it towards me. Hey, this is going to be one of the things I ask forgiveness for, Donald Trump. <laughs> this will be one of the things <laughs> I did go. today <laughs> that that? I will ask forgiveness for. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, sir. That's but good. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it right now. <laughs> That's good. That's great. Yeah. It's called a callback, Andrew. That's a callback. That's, That's a callback. A callback too. That's a solid callback. That's good comedy. I love a solid callback. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Because Father, before you came, we were talking about Dave Chappelle and Norm McDonald, and they're two of the greatest with the callback. So I oh, felt like yeah. if oh, I had man. an opportunity today, if I had an opportunity today, I would I would try. Yeah. Oh <laughs> man. Yeah. Have you heard Norm McDonald's story of meeting Donald Trump? And it's funny because no. he, he does this whole thing where he interrupts his own story because he's talking about it. And it's like a three minute clip and he's on Conan. His Conan stuff is next level, but he's on Conan and he says something along the lines of like, he's like, I heard you met Donald Trump. He's like, yeah, you know, uh, we met up backstage or something like that. And he's like, oh, there you are. I love you. You know, that kind of stuff. And then he interrupts his own story and starts talking about this whole other random thing. And then eventually like Conan's like, so you met Donald Trump and he like trying to loop it back. And Norm's like, oh, yeah, I met him. He came up to me. He said, you know, I love, love, love you. I think you're hilarious. Uh, Norm's like, do you care if I get a picture with you real quick? And Trump's like, yeah, it's fine. One second. Hold on. And then he's like, and then he walked down a hallway and got in an elevator and went away. <laughs> and that was the end of the story. <laughs> like, he just was like, never got a picture or anything. He just totally walked away and went on an elevator and left. And that's the end. But um, I think that I might have follow up for that, but I forgot what it was. Uh, well, know. we did not. We well, okay. Oh, so now we're on Trump. Remember. So now we're on Trump. We we veered away. Are we going to tackle the father? You said that it, that if we're going to talk about the tweet, we needed to tackle it separately. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. I think we've I think we've cleared out Russell Brand. Yeah. Are is now the time for us to? Yeah. We have some time left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Do you have it? Yeah, I'll pull. I'll get it. I'll grab yeah, it. I mean, you can get. It. I mean, you know, it's tough, right? Because, um, oh, I, <laughs> I really, I haven't. My, I mean, my initial thing was like, I don't really know what to what to make of this. And I think that you know, someone's like, you know, whatever that syndrome is, where it's like never Trump syndrome, whatever these things. Oh, oh, yeah. the uh, Trump derangement syndrome. Yeah. Trump yeah. Derangement. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't think I, I don't think I got that. Maybe I do. I don't know, but um, see if I you know, I just man, I'm gonna pull a Norm McDonald myself right now. I just want to say before you pull that up, you know what's kind okay. of blowing me away, and I'm surprised like things have not just exploded. Uh, your girl Candace is turned out to be quite oh. the, the private. Oh, eye. Fa father, father, she has. She, I'm totally hooked. Like, I'm told I'm totally hooked on Candace Owens' show right now. Like yeah, this I'm whole totally Kamala thing, it. yeah. It's crazy to me. It's crazy to me that well, it's not crazy. Oh, no. It this I've is, lost you. Okay, go ahead. This go ahead. this is this goes to show you where we're at. This is why I was saying earlier, you know, 
I'm not going to I'm not going to apologize for this. The overreach, you know what I mean? Guys, mm-hmm. like like this is this is why it's like the the larger echelon of, of things going on, it doesn't matter what you say or do on that level because the things that she has exposed by Kamala Harris and there's like mm-hmm. nothing happening. It's not even, you know, like like it, there's literally nothing happening. That goes to tell you everything. That, that just mm-hmm. from my perspective, you know what I mean? And just mm-hmm. just like Epstein, Diddy, all this stuff, just nothing ever happens with any of this stuff. Clear as day, nothing ever happens. That shows you how, you know, pun intended, how fixed things are, you know. I think I think she's got an arc. I hope she's got an arc that's coming, Father, because I feel like the only she's so close. I feel like Tucker Carlson, the powers and principalities, he's he's already there. But I feel like she, when she really integrates that into what she's doing, mm-hmm. and I feel like she's so she's implicitly doing it. But when I feel like she really, I, I think she's got an arc there. I think it's just going to be super powerful. Yeah. I think it's going to be super powerful. Yeah. So here's yeah. here's the tweet. Can you guys see it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. There it is. Yeah. That's hard. I mean, I know that like the Antichrist is going to know all of this stuff, but it's it's hard when, I don't know. It's hard when you it's know, this I, you real. You can't really, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, this is a hard, I mean, this one right here, and this is where I just got to go. It's like, man, amen i mean yeah because that that prayer in particular it's a it's a it's a particular one um and you know satan doesn't cast out satan in that sense it's just it's it's an interesting thing you know um yeah i i have to just kind of I have to plead the fifth on this one that I I just look at that. And because again, that that's a particular prayer and um, I don't know, man, you know, uh, I don't know. Oh, I have, um, it almost, I mean, it almost doesn't, I, I, my, my own, my own inclination on this, of course. And I think many people's inclination would be to say that this is like some sort of pandering or something, but it almost doesn't matter. Like yeah. if he's, if this, if he's going to put this prayer out, like who cares? Well, you I know think, what I mean? But like, that's, that says something and it's interesting. Oh, what was the point my wife made earlier? I can't remember what it was, but she said something earlier because we were talking about this and, um, Oh, she made a good point. Um, he is he's um he's actually kind of isolating part of his demographic by praying to an angel so that's the big one thousand percent well and not only that but it's also it's a little bit oh you think he's over here but he's over here a little bit because he didn't pick a human saint to pray to because he picked an angel well i mean look I, i think the thing is is i see here's where i would go with that it it it's too Catholic for a lot of his demographic. Well, yeah, he's presb- Isn't he Presbyterian? Yeah, it, but it's just too Catholic for a lot of his demographic. But this gets us back to that thing with Philippians. You know, some preach Christ out of envy and strife. Some also out of goodwill, out of contention, but but not sincerely, right? Um, hmm. But but, um, regardless, you know, Christ is preached. That's that's Philippians, right? And. Mm-hmm. And I think that's I, that's the kind of stance I want to stand on with some of these things because he, he, let me just kind of throw this out. It's like I don't know everything, you know, um, but like the invoking of Michael doesn't do it for me in the sense because listen, anyone who's practiced any form of kind of like contemporary New Age practice or magic, you know, that's Michael's like, all over Michael's it. Michael's all over it. Michael's all over all it. All over it. Santeria, Michael's all over it. You know what I'm saying? Kabbalah. Kabbalah. Like, so, so I just, I'm just throwing that out there for people so that, so yeah. that we're all, so yeah. I'm just kind of like, 
you know, just being really frank about it. That's not what got me, you know, mm-hmm. because him, him invoking Michael, like, so what, you know what I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. that's low level, you know, that's low level mm-hmm. wicked stuff, a little magic, whatever. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. It's that particular prayer. Yeah. That makes me like, ah, you know, it's like, uh, and again, you know, people can, you know, he could be pandering. He could be doing all those things, but where I feel comfortable in the sense of like, you know, um, safe is to be like, well, that verse out of Philippians, like, you know, Christ is preached and, and, um, you know, maybe if, if, I don't know, King Cyrus type of situation. That's what people had said before. That was that big conspiracy thing about him. Mm. I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable with that either, but I do know this, the, the other thing that you have to kind of be aware of, and I'm just seasoning it because, again, maybe I'm getting soft on my old age. I don't know. But as you guys could tell tonight, I'm just I'm just trying to be careful and stepping on some of these things because I don't you know, who am I? I don't want to be quick to to judge another man. But I, I will say this. Um, you know, one of the things that you have to always remember is that um and this is this is, oh, this is gonna be a tough one. I'm sorry, you know. And and I I just want to go on the record and and say, try and be charitable without being you know mushy wushy on stuff. But, um, you know, Rome is in apostasy. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't. I'm Shocker. Just, I'm one, Shocker. You know, I'm just. You know, like, you know, to to all. To all good, well-intentioned Catholics, God bless you. You know what I mean? I mean that. I mean that. God bless you, right? But the fact of the matter is, is Rome is in heresy and apostasy. And, um, you know, they'll, you know, they're, <laughs> I don't think I need to go any further with that. So that's why I'm like, I look at that. And again, for me, you guys are catching me in this space, whatever it is. It's just like, I'm trying to just be, be, slow and, and merciful with certain things because whatever you know i'm trying to I this, don't know is the, this is the time to do that but I mean, everyone's yeah. very reactionary yeah so. and i don't want to just fall into that you know but i i just i'm throwing that out there for the sake of keeping the salt not just being salty but keeping the salt which is yeah my pause is because that's a particular prayer just praying to michael doesn't mean anything to me but at the same time you know the Latins are in the they're you know heresy in the past. But, it, but so. is he in in any case though? Is he not making a very palpable acknowledgement of the intercession of the saints partici- participation of the bodiless powers, particular because, maybe not even the saints, but of bodiless powers? Because if he's doing that, there it isn't just the angels. Right. It is. It, there's other body, bodiless powers. And so then we got to be like, who is but whom is he serving? Well, if he's acknowledging that, is he saying that now they're participating? Like, is he, is that the conversation that well, is now being had? I think that to, to go to father's point earlier, it's controlled resistance. Right. Because like oh, the controlled whole, opposition, oh, yeah, controlled, yeah, yeah. controlled yeah. opposition, because I mean, again, this is guys get behind me and like. If I can just say something really quick, and because yes, we got we got kind of hit over the head a little bit a couple of weeks ago. I can't remember about that we have Trump derangement syndrome, and I just want to put something on the record that like I want to like the guy. Like I mean, I his his whole campaign thing, I, like that that picture of him being shielded but still sticks his hand out. Like that stuff works for me. Like on some level, it's incredible. It's incredible. It's it's good storytelling and I like good storyteller and he has done a very, very good job of portraying his own character in this certain light that stands for these things that like a part of my Midwestern white American is like, yes. Yeah. Like I'm down for this. Like, this is cool. Let's take it back. But it's the discernment that I've learned where you just like, he just sometimes says the quiet part loud and the loud part quiet. Like it just, there's stuff that doesn't add up. And by him, like him invoking the the he he's smart in the sense like him invoking a bodiless power, it just it means something because like I'm not thinking that many of the MAGA 
crowd, and I could be wrong, believe really too strongly in the intercession of anything other than them. Like, and that's not even an intercession, but their prayer goes straight to God, and that's all they need. So, like him, yeah. But like, here's the thing: I, I totally agree with you. I just want to throw this out, just so we can. This is my assessment on a, on a real level, though, because the fact of the matter is, is that I think a lot of people that you're talking about, they don't think that far. And I, I this is where maybe I I'm, I should be charitable in this area, but I, I can't be. I I know people. I know working class people, whatever. And like, I'm just telling you, people don't think that far. I, I'm saying this, unfortunately, they don't. You know what I mean? Oh. People take things people take things way more face value in the wrong way than you realize. That's part of the reason why we're at where we're at right now is because people take things face value. And on top of that, people who dig, they don't, they stop short. That's what Sartre is always talking about. Like people yeah. stop short. And people like they maybe and this is this is again forgive me this is oh, even people who come into the church they go like oh I found I found out about orthodoxy or, or I, I or I became Catholic out of being Protestant that's good enough people stop short and the wow. thing is is you can't stop short you will fight and you have to it's like St. Macarius you have to fight until you actually are in the gates the demon said Macarius. You've undone us in the toll houses. Bacarius, you've undone us. Your humility's defeated us. He's like, no, no, no. See, that's the thing people don't really know. They don't apply that. And that's why I am the way I am as a Christian, as a man, and as a priest. Because I know from experience, as well as what the church teaches, that this is how this is how the war goes. And that that's why it works. That's because it is in the shtick. It's whatever. It's like, what? Who cares, right? But for those who have ears to hear, let them hear. People don't care. And people go like, oh, the firemen, that's that. The, the firemen say that prayer, you know, for St. Michael. The cops say that prayer for St. Michael. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just telling you, you got to take in mind, people only go so far with it. Now, that being said, let me counterbalance it with this. There's an interview, which I didn't watch the whole thing. But there's an interview with Weinstein, which er, Eric, I, the er, Eric, Eric or Brett? Weinstein. Eric, yeah, I know which one Hold you're on. talking about. So was it? I, I always get them confused. Uh, Brett's Brett's the one with the who's who's the biologist, the evolutionary bi biologist. He's had a couple good ones too. Eric yeah, yeah. is the older one who worked for Teal. Okay, yeah, who's Eric. the mathematician? Yeah, Eric. Eric. Yeah, yeah, I, I know which one you're talking about. And. Not enough people saw this interview, I think. I didn't even watch the whole thing because I saw what I needed to see, or maybe there's more or whatever. But when he's talking about Kamala, for instance, and he's like, and he starts talking about Bush, he's like, you think he's, you know, the, the guy who's interviewing him is like, these guys can't be that meta. They can't be so meta. He's like, that's like a, that's like a 260 IQ thing. He's like, no, no, no. It's like a 160 IQ. You know what I mean? He's like, no. Being able to play these roles is totally within their thing. Yeah, I think he said it's like a 115 IQ. Yeah, 115 IQ. And and here's yeah. the thing I just want to say, right? Maybe I gotta stop playing nice tonight. <laughs> I don't know. That's just <laughs> I was mean, just I don't know. I, I, mean, I keep waiting for it. I keep waiting for you to stop. I don't know why I was playing song. nice. I'll oh, forgive me. I'm just who cares, right? So let me just again, I don't I don't care. I don't care. Here's why you just can't get me on board with it. But besides certain litmuses, which I don't want to talk about, which back in 2015, I was like, yep, 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 yep. Here's the thing. And I know it is what it is. But everyone has seen that Oprah interview. I'm sure they have. Right? Everyone's seen that Oprah interview. And like, not to be that guy, you know, there's like two Donald Trumps, right? There's 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 the Donald Trump Oprah and like pre all that stuff, right? And then there's the Donald Trump post WWE post the uh, the Apprentice, the, the apprentice, Showman the, Trump, the, Showman right? Trump. So those yeah. two, those those two Trumps, that right there tells you everything. Mm -hmm. That right there tells you everything. And I know people don't like to hear that, whatever. But this gets us back to the whole conspiracy thing. It's like that's one of the problems when someone gets 
kind of keyed in on the things they stop short. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people have stopped short with this. A lot of people, they'll talk whatever, you know, like, oh, yeah, they're, they're welcome, you know, Bilderberger and CFR and like all the stuff. But for some reason, when it gets to Trump, they're like, no, 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 no. No, no, no. He's that. You know, it is. It is. Which, and it's like, I'm going to tell you something. Even though he's even though he has every single one of the people at Bilderberg, their number in his phone. He like, knows them all on a first name basis, but never mind. He could not possibly be it. Like, <laughs> like, I just forgive me. I don't know why I was trying to be nice. I just, that was, <laughs> I, I just, I just, I, I, you <sighs> listen. There are things, and, and, and there are certain things that are true. There are certain things that, um, I don't mean to throw this out so recklessly, but you know, people who are really um, energized by by narcissistic traits, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I, I use I'm using that word, I'm using that phrase intentionally. Mm-hmm. People are energized by that, you know. Yeah. They they will do things to to because of that, right? Yep. They will do whatever they need to do to like get what they need. Right. And mm-hmm. so people don't understand. I think we talked about this before, but people don't understand. It's like there are these places of wealth and power that people get to that. It's just, a, it's just a different ball game. Like, you don't. it's, it's hard for people to kind of really fathom that sometimes, but there are moments in a person's life where they may be able to kind of like touch the hem of that. And you can go like, Oh yeah, I can see that. I could see where you get past certain things where you don't even have to care about survival, whatever. And then from there, the self-actualization, self-realization, self-deification that all that most of these people are swimming in becomes it is the it is the thing for them. Yeah. So what? So how that all plays out is this. So I'm not you know to make it not so vague for people. Um, when you start, when you start, you know, there's there's the thing that people are keyed into about the elites, whatever. But there's truth to that. There's truth. To oh, one hundred percent. Like when you like, I'm just gonna pull out your boy Caligula. Like you, people mm-hmm. don't understand. One of the things about Caligula that you need to really understand is that when you begin to to look at Caligula, that is literally the kind of like, if forgive me for the term, but the example or the icon of what happens to, to humanity when St. Nikolai talks about a human soul, a human spirit will either become, you know, holy and godlike or it will become demonic. It goes that that's the thing, right? Mm-hmm. Because a human, a lot of humans they end up just kind of being on that bestial level. They're just mm-hmm. looking to see like, cause look, squirrels and dogs, they care about, you know, bearing bones and yeah. nuts and they care yeah. about, you know, and, and I mean that both, you know, pun intended, right. They care about food and sex. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I thought exactly. that was a good joke. Exactly. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, very double very, entendre. Actually, very, actually really good. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, so many people, that's the level of their existence. Right. And so they're kept in that animalistic state. Yes. But once you move past that, right, this is where you start learning, you know, there is no neutrality in that sense. And so these people, you like Caligula is that extreme, but that's where you're headed. Like these yep. people without Christ, without that obedience, because all this is all this is connected without that obedience. You may think, oh, whatever, but that's where you're headed. And I'm going to tell you something. Isn't that the thing about Diddy? Isn't that the thing? About I was it? just about to say. Isn't I was just about, about to say. Thing, right? And isn't that the of thing course. about people who have taken pictures with them? Of course. Isn't that what? Isn't of course. That, isn't that why they're with Diddy and why they're with Epstein? You know what I'm saying? Well, if they, if father, if they weren't operating on that level, they couldn't be hanging out with him. That's the whole that's, thing. That's that's my exact point. You know what I'm he would not. He because he would not. He's not going to hang out with somebody who's who. Is not and th- and that's the weirdest the weirdest part about it is that like there is actually and I mean look I experienced it to a certain degree myself because I was f- for a period I was rich and famous and I tell you that it takes it's not very long until all the things that everybody else is fantasizing about and then you're like oh I've done them all 
the locations. The, mm-hmm. Oh, I've driven around it. And, and, and depending on if you're a simple, relatively simple person like me, you actually. So like I never the car thing was never even a thing for me. Like the Andrew Tate, I need muscle cars. That was never even a thing. So I was way quicker to go towards. It was like, well, here's the things. OK, I've done them all. OK, now. But I, and I had no orientation toward Christ. And that period, I was just talking to my wife. To this morning, out of nowhere, she was like, do you ever miss your old life? She said to me, do you ever miss your old life? And I said, you know, if I think about it nostalgically, the problem is that you don't remember all the bad things. Oh, but I said, the man. one thing that I have not let myself forget is I have never been more deeply unhappy and tormented mm-hmm. Than I was in those periods when I lit- when I could just wake up in the morning and be like, I don't not only do I not have to do anything today, but I could go wherever I want. Mm-hmm. Where do I want to go? I could book a ticket and just go and just mm-hmm. go live in a hotel for a week somewhere and go party and do all of this. And it was like and it was in those moments that I was the most deeply unhappy. And I literally had demons swirling in the form of like manifested people swirling around me all day, every day, mm-hmm. causing me nothing but pain. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I was poisoned all day long. And it was, and I, and I told to my wife and it's like, you know what? It doesn't, the threshold at which that happens. Cause I wasn't even a D list celebrity. Mm-hmm. And yet it started to happen to me at even that threshold. Mm-hmm. So it's like these guys who are a list celebrities. Oh, pff. listen, I had, I had, you know, just shout out to to my old friend Happy. I had a buddy. I mean, he was just, you know, um, I won't get too much into it. I just happy. Shout out to Happy. But he was just design, like set designer guy for like a, you know, an E-list act who had like a little bit of whatever. Mm-hmm. And he, I mean, we would talk about this stuff, you know, when I would mm-hmm. be uh, doing sessions on him tattooing whatever and just like the crazy stuff like mm-hmm. crazy crazy preternatural like like what just happened here that person where did that person come from and like how you know what i mean and this is the thing is is once you kind of like begin touching that you know that kind of edge of that darkness it's just it really it really doesn't take much and and what's funny is it's getting exported to everybody. Yeah. Oh yeah. Through Mm. this, through this, people are now able to touch the hem of that darkness in ways that they couldn't before. And they want it. They they want, want they, they want it. Yeah. Because this right here, right. This right here can bring you to a place by which you can all, but, do whatever and kind of get whatever you want Mm -hmm. in a Mm -hmm. way that you couldn't before. And so that's why I was trying to hint at earlier. It's like people don't need to actually be at that level to even kind of, you know, wonder at what I'm talking about. Cause you can end up, you can end up Caligula just through this right here. Okay. That's what I've been trying. What's the deal with Caligula? Like, I don't understand. I know he's a Roman emperor, right? Okay. Yeah, but he was the most like wick, most wicked man that ever lived, or something yeah, like that, Cal- before, yeah, before Calig- Crowley or whatever. Yeah, Caligula is like Caligula is is the he is he was like the most debaucherous, just mad. I mean, he, some would argue like you know Nero's bad. Nero's bad because you know as Christians we see him as an antichrist and all that stuff. But Caligula, just on a kind of natural level, he was just. The most, but he were, he was Nero's nephew, right? Like Nero, like raised him. If I'm not mistaken, he was Nero, like raised him on some crazy island where, like, it was. It was. If I've got this, if I remember my Roman history correctly, Caligula was like sort of conditioned through like crazy abuse by whoever his, and I think it was Nero, to like be turned. And, I've got to look this up to so that I'm not just talking crazy, but I believe it was. Let me see. Yeah. Let me see. Look it up. But go ahead. Sorry. I, I just I know Caligula is a symbol when you look at his his exploits and um, he's a symbol of this kind of like pent ultimate uh, level of just like hedonism and, and that like just like the, that demonic 
power. I mean, Nero is up there for us, obviously, too. But, you know, there's something uh, particularly uh, we Caligula invokes the the more, I don't know, just I don't know, pornographic aspect of it, you know. Okay. Uh, his, uh, da, 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 da. he was the son of Atticus and Augustus. Remember, he is related somehow to Nero, though. Born two yeah. years before Tiberius. Hold on, I'll. I'll yeah, I wasn't familiar with the of the Nero connection, but no, he was he was raised. Hold on, it's just the point that I was trying to make was that it was like he was the. Like he was the result of remember when we were talking about the system becoming wicked, mm-hmm. that he was it wasn't just that he was a wicked individual, but he was basically like the um, product mm-hmm. of the full wickedness. Yeah, the full wickedness of so here it is. Uh, yeah. Oh, Tiberius. Tiberius. It Tiberius. wasn't Nero. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Caligula was the sole male survivor of his family. Then his so Tiberius, I guess, is his uncle. Withdrew from public life to the island of Capri, and in 31, Caligula joined him there. And it was on Capri that Tiberius had gone basically insane. And so for six years, he's like putting his nephew or whatever through all this craziness. And then when Tiberius died. Caligula took over the reign and he had just basically been soaked in like six years of de- insane debauchery. Yeah. yeah. And that's, yeah. So it was Tiberius, not Nero, it was Tiberius. So, which is great because again, I love the connection with again about the system and the, the system being mm-hmm. wicked and all these things. And, you know, it's just important to understand too, because again, I, I, I guess it's an uncomfortable place to be at. I'm not sure. I find it very energizing, but Look, guys, just why do you have to throw your hat in with somebody? You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. It's just like, you know, was Paul wasn't throwing his hat in with with Rome when he's saying to pray? Romans thirteen isn't about like Rome's the best. That's like people are crazy. That's not what that's not what's going on. That's part of our tension is that we we do what we do out of obedience, looping everything again out of obedience to God. Yeah, because remember. Someone wants to rape your daughter in front of me, I'll stop them because no greater love has a man than to lay down his life for his friend. Okay. But if you're trying to take me out, well, go ahead. Because why? Because it's by me being like unto death, I trust Christ. That's where our witness comes. That's what makes the martyrs the martyrs. Right. That's why St. George, St. Demetrius, St. Boris, you know, St. Minas, like, they're not like, oh, they came for them and they decided, like, they all of a sudden they whipped out their swords and God energized their swords into heavenly fire and they slew 5,000 of the Romans who were torturing the Christians and they went on and they slew another 150,000 soldiers. Like, that's not the story of the martyrs, right? Do you know why? Because, Lord, Lord, in that day, did we not work many miracles in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not mow down a bunch of communist fools with our ARs right, in, in your, your name? name. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's the that's the that's the mystery inside of that, right? That's the mystery inside of it. Yeah. Is that you don't just get to it doesn't just get to be. But father, I so that we don't get the clickety clacks. You're not saying if you're attacked, because this is often the thing, like you're not saying if you're attacked personally not to defend yourself, but you're saying if they come for you as persecution of as part of persecution of the church yes, or to persecute you for the sake of Christ, yes, then bear witness, but not just some dudes trying to take your wallet. <laughs> like in that case, defend yourself. <laughs> yeah, say about what, but but here, here's 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 a little bit of the salt, right? OK, I'm just saying, ahead. you know. If it happens, whatever, I'll see you in confession. It's all good, right? Right. We're all, okay. We're, gotcha, all, gotcha. we're all human, right? But gotcha. the thing is, is 
once you get it back, you know, don't get on top of him and just enjoy plucking right. his eyes out with your thumbs. Right. Because he took right. your phone. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, yeah, don't get right. all sadistic and be like, oh, I've been waiting for an opportunity to torture somebody. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Right. That's the difference. That's the difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because this is this has been. It seems to be the immediate thing that if there's any criticism of somebody being like, yeah, you know, the Byzantium guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we need to we need to like new Byzantium and yeah, get your get your armor on and let's go slay some infidels, you know, like um the immediate whenever it's like, hey, uh maybe that's not maybe that's not what we're maybe that's not obedience to Christ. Yeah. Maybe that's not obedience to Christ. The immediate thing that comes back is like, what is this? The church is not pacifistic. It's not, and it's like, yo, but and I think that this is this is that, you know, the difference between compliance and a, it's weird because I see it here in a microcosm with people in government and people in power. And it's interesting to see because I'm on a first name basis with with many of them. So it's interesting to actually see the workings in a microcosm. But it's like most people are OK with compliance, but compliance is always like, you know, then you're like, well, why did X, Y, Z happen? Mm-hmm. They say, well, I was never asked. I was complying. I was never asked to do yeah. this thing and this thing and this thing, but someone who was obedient, mm-hmm. who who was awesome. oriented toward doing out of love, was like, "This is my father's house, and I need to care for my father's house." Or they would have done my, those things. These are my my sheep, rather than the hireling, you know, who abandons the sheep at the first chance he can get, you know, mm-hmm. than the mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And this, I mean. It's it, but it's so on so many things. It's so palpable. I, I mean, I'll give you an example. It just happened. There was there were two police dogs, two canine units who were left in a police car and died, like last week. Right? Yep. Where you're at? The, yeah. It was. Dang. It's a huge. Sca- it's a huge scandal here right now. And so, like, it was it was just over over the weekend. The scandal broke and everything. Two police dogs, right, left in the car. For two hours. And we know it was for two hours. But the 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 story that comes out then from the police department. So they had a state funeral for these dogs, as they're supposed to. They're officers. Yeah. Right. Officers. These are the first officers killed in the line of duty, I think, like ever here. And so they had a state funeral. They tried to keep it all like hush hush and everything. But then you look and you're like, OK. Here's this officer or officers. There's people involved. You would expect in this case, you're like my actions, regardless of whether they're they're saying it's a car malfunction and all of a sudden there was air conditioner, but then all of a sudden it started blowing hot air. Somehow it's miraculously just or unfortunately failed while they're sitting in the car. And it's like, yo, something. But no, you could see like there's no there. The names were hidden of the officers. Mm -hmm. They were they were told the the commissioner said they put them right back into. Oh, yeah, they're in mourning, but we put them back on patrol. No suspension without pay. No even suspension without pay while there is an investigation. And you're just you look down it and you're like, okay, all along the line, there's compliance. Something screwed up, but everybody along the line, there's compliance, mm-hmm. but there's no obedience. Mm-hmm. Even mm-hmm. to this idea of your your fellow brothers in arms who you are there to protect, mm-hmm. and these dogs were there, and you had care, mm-hmm. and you say you operated from love, like, yeah, I would yeah, expect yeah, yeah, the yeah. officer to be uh, it, obedience. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Forgive me. No, ahead, this Bob. is this is so good. I just want to jump in on it because the, this okay, is the please. thing, right? This is the thing. Because the compliance, like obedience, it comes out of that love, like you're trying to get at, right? And so in this situation, the honor and the dignity of being the officers and like even like even what it means for like if those officers had obedience, if they had love, if they had philotomo. They they be like nah nah this is I did it you know what I mean and just like they would do what they needed to do to not even just because like the dogs 
but because they value what they value being an officer so much. Are you following me? It's, yeah. it's the same thing. It's like, this is part of what happened. This is the riddle that people couldn't understand um, about what happened in 20 with like bishops and like bishops asking for like weird stuff to happen is it was really simple actually. And the person who wanted to follow Christ and that's not some, see, that's, that's the trick where public orthodoxy and all those people who are on that side of whatever, all those people in the antichrist, they want to play that game. Like, well, what do you, you know, what does this mean? Like, oh, yeah. it's like, no, no, no. It's real simple. People who are obedient to Christ, they obeyed Christ. Even if it, even if that meant something else, sure, sure, sure. I'll play the nice guy again, be charitable. Okay, yeah, people made mistakes, blah, blah, whatever, right? At the end of the day, it's like, it's <laughs> when the light is on, it's on, right? It's like, there was no, there was like, what is going on? Then once you see it, it's like, you see it. And then from that point, you made that choice. Everyone at first was like, what is going on? What is going on? Okay, sure. But there came that point where you were like, mm the light was the light got flipped on and you were either going to follow Christ and be obedient or you weren't. Right. And if you didn't, great. We're not Donatists. Great. Well, just go ahead and, and, you know, repent and, but actually repent. Don't just sweep it under the rug and be like, well, nobody knew. I didn't know. It's like, no, you knew, man. And you chose to just kind of go with the flow. You choose to go with the system. So let me keep going. I'm going to go. So I'm going, please. So, so, so that love thing is huge because, you know, like for a monastic. So, you know, a lot of monastics, they have superiors, they have abbots, they have, they have, you know, abbesses that they don't particularly like sometimes. Mm. Right. Are they being obedient to, you know, to Abbot John? Not really. Right. They, they do it. To, they do it to be, to be following Christ. This is, this is St. Um, Ephraim of Katanakia. He was, you know, one of, um, one of the disciples of uh, St. Joseph the Hesychast, who like he had an elder who was, was not good to him, did not teach him, was cruel mm -hmm. to him. But, you know, St. Joseph just mentored him into obedience to that, to that busted elder. Why? For the love of Christ. Because mm -hmm. Christ is real. And if you actually want to follow Christ, Christ will show you where to be obedient and where to pick up. Here's the big surprise, everybody. Your cross. And mm -hmm. that's why I'm just going to, you know, kind of pull the clothes off of people, pull the covers off. That's why, like I'm saying, like this, some of the stuff with the political things, it's, it's you really aren't being obedient to Christ because you're acting like it's so hard to find the truth. It's not really. There's things where it gets sticky and like, yeah, we want to be careful not to fall to the right side or to the left side road path. Right. But ultimately, like. You know, even just me, like me trying to be charitable to like Russell Brand and like whatever. I'm just trying to be charitable. So, like so I'm trying to get, I know my tendency to just be like, mm. right. That's all that is. But I'm not, I'm not like, hey, we should sign up and, and like, right. you know, like, you let's, know, what I'm let's all crazy? get into our tidy whities Let's all yeah. get into our tidy whities and get yeah. in the water with yeah. Russell. Are you crazy yeah. now? No, you're not Are saying you crazy? that. You're not you know saying I mean? that. Yeah. So, so, so that's the thing is like love, the love for Christ, right? It's like, a priest loves Christ was supposed to, right? A priest loves Christ and and wants to honor Christ in everything. I'll just put this philotomo, right? So this is my big thing about it. You know, I can't, you know, I'm not Greek. We're not Greeks, whatever. We're converts, blah, 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 whatever. But philotomo, the love of honor, I think in our context now, the way for us to have philotomo is, is understanding that, it's fundamentally in losing. That's why St. Lazar, mm. that's why the Serbian church is the best because it's in loss that you can actually become heroic. That's the only way. Yeah. Yeah. Who? Let me give you an example. How, how, like, how do you find Philotimo now? Because for us, the pursuit of Philotimo so many times can end up just being vainglorious. Well, yeah. the way that I think you discern it is, in the face of certain loss, you still do the right thing. And that's what people did not do in 20. In the face of certain, like, I'm going to lose this, I'm going to be busted, they chose not to do it. That's not for yeah. You see what I'm saying? The firefighter who's like, hey, I'm looking at that building burning. 
I can hear that baby crying in there. I'm probably not going to make it out. And they run in there. That dude's got Falotimo. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? And that's that's what it takes to really kind of, you know, I, I think discern. And that's why people's discernment is weird because they don't have love for Christ in that sense. I know it's hard. I know people don't want to hear that. I'm sorry. But that that's that's the big secret. It isn't just whatever. It's like the discernment comes from love of Christ and love of truth because that's the big that's the big lie the devil feeds everyone is that, you know, truth is subjective. And like even people who are like, no, I'm a Christian and like you, you know, postmodernists and you you trannies. It's like, no, something's absolute. It's like, yeah, but in your own life, do you make truth subjective? Do you really live in such a way where you're unflinching in truth? I'm just asking because I'm going to tell you something. When you start living like that, you better get ready for people not to like you. You better get ready for people to be upset with you all the time, right? What's his name? Socrates? Anyways, so like that reality mm-hmm. is, is you see, no one, no, one, no one wants to talk about this. And, and because our, our, our conversations about Christ as Orthodox Christians in this current milieu, politically and socially speaking, is always in the framework of winning. It's always in the framework of like, how do we win? How do we, you know, get whatever? And it's just like, the, psh, Where's the cross, man? You show your love for Jesus by your willingness to die and to lose. And and the problem is when we say die, again, everyone's got vainglory. Everybody thinks they're Leonidas, man. Let me tell you something. Like the hot gates and everything, it's like, that's a great story. But like the thing for me in the hot gates is you're going to die. Yep. You, and and it yep. isn't even, and it wasn't just they like. Did, he didn't win. He didn't win. Leonidas did not win. He didn't they win. did. That was a, they lost the battle. That's they what didn't. most people don't understand. They don't, they they, don't put they that together. The they don't put that together. That's again, forgive me. I'm just giving a shout out, right? Because I love him. It's Zar Lazar again. He did yeah. not win. Yeah. He did not win. Yeah. But and so people go, oh, whatever. But it's just like, man, I hope someone hears what I'm saying to you because listen to me. If you want to experience the grace of Christ, like if you dare read Athenite spirituality, you dare read stuff beyond just like whatever, no no disrespect, but if 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 you can make it past, I don't know, Farley or I mean, whatever people read, I don't know what they read anymore. But <laughs> like if you dare reading that stuff to get past it, I'm gonna tell you the only way you're gonna experience it, because you're not a monk, you're probably not a priest. And if you're a priest, this applies to you too. The only way you're going to experience it is by willing to go like, I'm going to lose Lord. Show me. Uh-huh. Cause I'm going to, I guarantee you there's going to be places in your life where it's like, yeah, I'm going to lose. And, and see, no one thinks like this proactively. It's like, it's, it's good when it's upon you. God bless you. But if you want that leg up, if you want that edge, you just going to be like, okay, where am I, where am I going to lose? You know? Um, because I'm going to tell you something. It's this is this again. This this is your under Joseph, right? It's at the end of your endurance that grace comes. You can't get that grace that we're talking about by just always trying to be right, always trying to be like that's just you know what I mean. Or uh, well, fa- father, father, or wanting me. to be like this is, I, this is I, I did so no. so so important because the question is has to be like what are you after. Mm-hmm. Are you after? Because mm-hmm. are you after grace? Mm-hmm. Like, it, are you after Christ? That's really, the only yeah, that's the only thing you should be after. And if you are, then you should, like, the bottom. I mean, but I think this has been one of the. Th- I think that this is one of the advantages, for better or worse, or like one of the. I don't. I don't know. You know, like. I, I, it's but it's it's one of the things of coming out of the occult to a certain degree is that you realize that like it's gonna hurt like that's this goal that's mm-hmm. on the other side this is gonna hurt mm-hmm. the journey there is going to hurt and so then you've got to ask yourself like what is it what is it worth and it's just that the trick of the demons is that they tell you oh no 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 it's not, it's not going to hurt. It's not going to hurt. You can have, I'll give you, I'll give it to you right now. It still is going to hurt. Mm-hmm. It's going to hurt worse. You'll get a little mm-hmm. something now. It's like the, the drinking in the hangover, mm-hmm. right? It's like, do you want the pain before or do you mm-hmm. want the pain after? Mm-hmm. But yeah. you're going to, you're going to get the pain yeah. one and, way or the other. 
and it's not going to produce anything for you. No. That's right. That's right. See, because that, the hang- see, that, yeah, because the hangover is the end. Yeah. It's like, no, at the end, it's don't like, you want Christ? <laughs> yeah. It's like I was, you know, again, here's a little timestamp nugget for people. Look, everybody's chasing happiness. The demons want to give people happiness. But Christians, not only do we not care about happiness, I think, you know, again, whatever. It's just me. I think more Christians, more Orthodox need to actually have a disdain for happiness. We need to have a disdain for it. We need to look, we need to look upon happiness with disdain. I know, I know, <laughs> whatever. But I'm just telling you because we are people of joy, not this, not happiness. And I, if this isn't semantics, I'm gonna show you why it's not semantics, right? Happiness is why you're looking at porn. Happiness is why you ate too much. Happiness is like why you, you know, all the all the vices you did, you're looking for happiness. That's why your passions are where they are, because you want happiness. Joy, on the other hand, let me tell you what joy is. You know, when you work out and you actually really worked out, you just didn't like put on your, your yoga pants and went to the gym to look cute. You actually worked out and like it was terrible, but like you came back, you felt so alive and like you're sore that next day. That kind of like, ah, uh, that like soreness. And it's like, you're really sore, but it's like, it's sweet because you know, you know what I mean? That's joy. That's, if you don't know what joy is, that's joy. You know, joy is you went above and beyond. You worked 50 hours that week, right? And a buddy from church called. He needed help moving, whatever. Everyone bailed on him. And just like you listened to your conscience, you went, you helped him move, you smashed your thumb. You know what I mean? You, 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 you know, you weren't able to like, you, you missed out on these other things, but you know, it's like, he like, look, he's like, man, thanks, man. And I really, no one else was there to help me. And that feeling you have just like, ah, that's joy. That's what as Christians to be, to be of service, mm. to be, it's the feeling when you've been of service, which right it's, back to the obedience, it, right? It, yes. It's the feeling of being of service, but it's also the it's also the encounter of the proper experience of pain mm. yes because you that's you can't have joy without pain yeah joy mm-hmm. comes from the proper experience of pain mm. pain in of itself is not beneficial it's not david goggins you know what i'm saying like <laughs> David's been, gonna store. He's gonna run it. He's gonna knock the door open. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a while. Who carried the boats? Who carried the boats? Oh, the turbo. Just, yeah, I'm just gonna shout out. You know what I mean? I'd be great. Maybe he'll show up and help me help me get in shape. You know what I'm saying? But, anyways, yeah. Like, careful pain. what you wish for, Father. Yeah. I careful know. What you wish right? for. Oh my gosh. Just goes oh in. Oh my gosh. I can see and... it now. I'm on his reality show. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, like I I think that this reality of the proper use of pain, because this is the same Maximus, you know, the pain pleasure cycle that happens, mm-hmm. you know, man trying to escape pain seeks pleasure and then ends him in more pain. And so the way to break that cycle, Christ does that by the cross, right? Mm-hmm. By enduring the cross and the pain of the cross for the sake of love, you break out of that cycle, right? And so joy is is the phenomena of the appreciation of that experience. And that's why for us, because we're such hedonists and we're so slothful, we're so weak, we need to disdain happiness and, and pursue pursue joy. Yeah. I, that was, uh, that's like, whenever I do my counseling thing, I, I never like promise them, I'm like, I never really promised people happy, joyous, and free. Like, that's not really, that's not been my experience in recovery. And um, I think there's a thing as like, I can't remember who it was, but the saint was just talking about, like, the faith is not to be bound, like, binded. It's not supposed to, like, make things heavier or tighten you. It's supposed to relax you. It's supposed to bring you life. I think that that's a difficult tension to maintain, but the hack is, to me, I found the hack is when you do things for other people, you get this little boost of energy. You get this like little like, oh, you know, like whereas 
sometimes I, I, it's difficult for me to say the Jesus prayer, but when I think, and this is just the Father is just telling me to do this, but to think of the prayer for someone, then suddenly you'll get this little boost. You'll get this like, oh, that's something to focus on then, because it takes the whole like, well, I don't have to focus on this. is not about me. This is, can become about another person. So, um, but anyway. I think we're at two hours. We're at two hours. And I don't really remember. It's been a day, so I don't really remember the things we're supposed to plug. So I'm, I think we're just go back and that, you know, it's music goes on a playlist. I don't know. Your camera shut off. There he is. Um, is anytime we mention music goes into a playlist, both on Spotify and my Apple music world path podcast playlist, something like that. Then, um, Please look into the school if you guys are interested. You know, it's just not even as support, but just that this is something you're interested in starting as well. Mount Tabor, you know, because um, it's it's uh, it's quickly becoming essential in my eyes to teach children. You know, not only what to th- not necessarily what to think, but how to think. And I think that that's really really important um, in an age of too much information. Um, and then. Uh, there's the skull of coffee who's associated with Mount Tabor. Please give that a shot. S K O L A. Um, it's pretty fantastic. It's made at it's Mount Tabor. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Seems to be a hit. You know, it's the coffee we drink every Sunday for coffee hour and vast improvement over. We've had a, a coffee journey at St. Mary's and to varying degrees <laughs> of quality. We peaked a long time ago and it wasn't sustainable because we were getting like good coffee. We had too many people now. We had to kind of like go down to Folgers and then come back up. So we're back up now. But um, and then aside from that, uh, who's the guy that does the thumbnail? Is it Jim? Jack. Jack. I don't know why I have such a hard time. Jack, you're again. You need some school of coffee. I need. Some, I need <laughs> it's a little late for school of coffee. Says who? Uh, <laughs> um, my father like takes a drink of his mug. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah right. Uh, um, you're killing it, man. Your those your thumbnails continue to be great. I I just mm-hmm. you just great. zoned into you're in fine form, my good friend. Fourth member of the show. Um, and That's then right. uh, if you want to contact us, contact at royalpath.network. So people like to reach out to me individually, Andrew at royalpath.network. You're free to do either. Although with me, it'll probably take longer. But thank you, gentlemen. Have a good night. Thank you. And thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.